Chevy Buick GMC. Come see me, Chris. Thirty seconds. Start early. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Two, another chance of Saturday night. It's a little late now, and then you'll come to the top. Oh, yeah, beautiful morning. It's Friday morning, and that means it's time for the first federal program on WROI Giant FM and streaming live on the first federal Facebook page. It is indeed Friday morning. Uh, I can't white say it's completely beautiful uh, if you like white it is beautiful because there's snow all over the place and it is cold but it is time for the first federal program uh, got both Tanner Lee and Evan Goshock here with us this morning uh, not sure how to act <laughs> double trouble this morning <laughs> yeah look out morning morning morning, morning. Yeah, it's a little dark out there a little slick in some spots so everybody be careful but the Maybe good news is that I'm starting to see light. Yeah, I see that too. So that, that's a plus. That's when it makes the snow look pretty. You said it looks white out there. When yeah. it's dark, it's not so, not so good to look at. No, no, never. I'm not a big snow fan, so, you know. No. <laughs> I'm not too many people who are. I, I like snow. No, of <laughs> yeah. course he yeah. does. Yeah. Hey, there's uh, the one. There's, Todd oh. does. He's giving us the thumbs All right. up. All All right. Right. He might be in the minority here, Paul. It's uh, fresh, you know. It is white, fresh. Fresh and true. clean. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's the true. renewal so. of the new year. But yeah, it's been a cold, snowy week. <laughs> it week. has. Um, it looks like we might have some more snow on the way today. Uh, yeah, Possibly. chance of it today and then tomorrow night again. So uh, it's it's not going anywhere. Uh, it is January 27th. So. Yep. My kid said the sledding hill was in full activity this week. So I have seen pictures from nice, the sledding hill. Yeah, nice community yeah. asset to have. I'm glad we could use it this year. Going down there. <laughs> they, said they saw a, a set of skis, a snowboard, sled, saucers, the whole bit. Well, everything. All right. All right. So, you going to put any uh, cooking oil on the bottom of it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> of course. Non nutritive cereal varnish. <laughs> you, you, you can use anything to sled. Lunch trays work good, too. <laughs> Figured that out in college. Okay. Uh, we're not going to get into that. Interesting. Yeah, lunch tray. <laughs> yeah, that's. that's that's a show for mid year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it's been a been an interesting week for everybody. Yeah, uh, the students especially they've had some e learning days this week and some off yeah. days. And, yeah, and, and as of right now, Rochester is closed. Um, no e learning. Uh, it will be a make up day. They said to watch the updated calendar later today. Okay. All, right. All right. Interesting. Well, we've got um, a fun guest this morning. <laughs> Got a, got a Times Theater grand reopening just over two weeks away. I know, it's been years in the making, and now we're two weeks away, and I cannot wait. I can't either. We've got all the exclusive details <laughs> this morning <laughs> later in the show. I'm really excited to hear about them and start the, getting the buzz really going around the community for the grand reopening. Yeah. Okay. Our trivia this morning all right, let's is kind of around the grand opening here. Okay. In the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. All right. How many golden tickets are hidden in the Wonka bars of chocolate? Okay. Is it five, eight, ten, or twelve? Do you know? Okay. Do you like this movie, Paul? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a constant. Oh, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm just going to have to remember the details. But, uh, I'm pretty confident in my answer. If I knew it was a constant in your house, well, I could have put some really difficult ones in Oh, yeah, I know. I didn't know how often he watched it or if he even... Tom will come up with the, with the subsequent question. Yeah, 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 yeah. a secondary one. Something a little yeah. tougher. Yeah. So I found a lot of pretty good ones for that movie. I could have oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a classic. It yeah. is a classic. It is. It is. So. Okay. We got some sports to report on this morning. A lot of local sports going on, at least as of now. Yes. Subject to change when there's school yep. closings and everything like that. Yes. But um, Rochester boys and girls in action tonight. Yeah. As of now again. As of now. Against as Northfield. Now. Uh, the girls will be um, hosting Northfield. The boys 
or at Northfield yes. tonight. Rochester boys take their 7-5 record over to Northfield and there's a 5-9 record. Mm-hmm. Tiffany New Valley is also in action tonight. Uh, their boys play at Manchester. That's going to be a good one. Valley's 11-3 and and Manchester's 12-3. And, and uh, Caston takes their 4-9 and nine record on the road to Pioneer, 2-13. And, and Winnemac uh, hosts West Central tonight. Winnemac's 5-12, and 12, West Central's 7-9. So right. Winnemac's the only local school posting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the rest on the road, life on the road. Yeah, so, yeah I love it. So uh, good luck to everybody in, in the... That, that's playing tonight. I remember the cold buses this time. Oh, yeah. That's a toughie. You keep your coat on for about <laughs> the whole ride. Yep. <laughs> but it always feels better after a victory. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. Maybe that's not so much point. after a loss. But uh, plenty of college basketball this weekend, um, locally around the state of Indiana, like always. Um, starting tomorrow at noon on ESPN2, Notre Dame. Having a rough season, 9 and 12 so far. But they host a team that's having a really rough season oh, in Louisville. That's crazy. Two and eighteen. Yeah, that's that's hard to do that, shocking. isn't it? Just shocking. The non conference schedules are yeah. yeah, that's difficult to State, be State of Kentucky's struggling in college basketball this year. Um, so I far. I don't mind it. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say it, glad you did. I was gonna let you go there, but uh, um, yeah. No Louisville, offense to our Kentucky no, listeners. No, not at all, not at all. But the Louisville tough season there, so maybe Notre Dame can get a, get a win and get going there. And Butler's also in action tomorrow at 4 o'clock on Fox Sports 1. They're 11-11. Eleven eleven. Rough first year for Thad Mata so far. Yeah. He didn't get a, he didn't have a ton to work with, although Jordan did leave him a lot, but it's still probably not going as, as well as Butler fans have hoped. Rebuilding year. Yeah, we'll call it a rebuilding year. Hate to say year. it. And unfortunately, when they're losing lately, they're losing by a lot. That's it's not good. But they do host Seton Hall, who's 12-9. and nine. Once again, that's games tomorrow at 4 o'clock on Fox Sports 1. In both Indiana and Purdue are, are Indiana is actually in action tomorrow. I was thinking they were Sunday. They're tomorrow night at eight o'clock on Fox. They're on a four-game win streak with a record of fourteen and six, and they host Ohio State, who has got a record of eleven and nine and not playing very well. No, I, I know it surprisingly. Yeah, a little bit below their standard. Yeah, I think. they got too much talent to be playing the way they are. So, so they could really turn it around. So I, I think I think IU will get that one. Simple, so. Simply Hall should be rocking, like I said, eight o'clock on Fox prime time game without. Uh, NFL to worry about now, so yeah. you'll see a lot more Saturday night college basketball games going yeah, That's forward. good. I like this time of year. Then uh, Purdue uh, improved at 20 and 1 last night, getting a win up in Michigan, a place that's been a house of horrors for them. They were 1 and 7 in the last decade up at Michigan going into last night. Found a way to get it done. They faced Michigan State, who also won last night over Iowa. They're 14 and 7. That game's on Sunday at 12 15 on CBS. So kind of a lead into the to the playoffs later in the day. So yeah. a lot of basketball action going on. That definitely that time of year. Yeah. Getting almost to February and then, then it'll be March. Uh. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Ball>. <laughs> Love but, it. but then if the playoffs are still going on after this weekend we'll know who's in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Nobody's in under rating for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting it out there. There's one team I'm definitely not rating for. The others <clears> they can <throat> make it. Uh, San Francisco 49ers at the Philadelphia Eagles at three o'clock on Sunday. Then the Cincinnati Bengals are at the Kansas City Chiefs in the later game on Sunday. That's a rematch from last year's AFC Championship game. So, and, and San Fran was in the NFC Championship game last year. So Philly's the only new one in the conference championships this year. But uh, any predictions? Um, no. No. I think they're pretty, pretty good matchups in terms too. of viewing quality. I do I too. think they will be very entertaining games. The AFC. Repeat, mm-hmm. I think, has just some great storylines mm-hmm. to it and some really resiliency mm-hmm. those teams. you got up-and-coming Phillies, had a lot of success this year, just a great roster all around. Yeah. And then San Francisco, you know, they've got the, probably the best story of the year. Mm-hmm. So I could see a lot of people maybe rooting for them yep. um, to take down the Eagles. Um, and they've got a lot of weapons as well on yeah, offense. Sure do. And then it's just such a tough defense. So... I think I think we got a great Sunday of, of playoff games. I'll go both road teams. Something kind of rare. I'll, I'll take I'll take the Niners and the, and the Bengals, which would be a rematch of Super Bowl twenty three. So. That's what I'd like to happen. Yeah, me too. Me too. 
Just, just not the Chiefs. I'll throw it out there. I, I hate, <laughs> I hate counting against the Chiefs. Though. I know. They, I know. And the, Burrow's three and zero against them. It's like that eventually that's going to the going to fall there. So I know. should be some good games on Sunday though. So a lot of sports action going on. And lastly, my sports report: uh, Indiana native Scott Rowland was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame this week. Did that surprise yes. you? It did actually. Yeah. Um, we're getting to the point where there's some guys that are borderline that I really wouldn't put in. They're starting to get in. Lack of other interesting yeah, candidates. Right. I saw Todd Helton miss by 11 votes. He probably had a tough time sleeping that night. <laughs> I think next year's his last year. He'll but get if, if, yeah, if history mm-hmm. repeats itself, he'll get it next year. So, but Scott Rowland, good career for the Phillies, the Cardinals, and the Reds. So. Really good defensive player, yeah. and then had some years of good offense right. too. And the Indiana high school baseball legend down in Jasper County, so. or Jasper, Indiana, should say, not Jasper County. I got some tidbits here this morning, just a couple because I try to keep these decently positive, and there's a lot of negative <laughs> ones. So, on this day in 1956, RCA released Elvis Presley's single "Heartbreak Hotel." Uh, Went on to do pretty well. Yeah, so quite yeah. a few. You know, on this day, 1969, Chuck Knoll was named the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was the youngest coach in the league at the time. Why that significant? Can you guess how many coaches since 1969 the Steelers have had, Paul? Forty. Three. Oh. Three coaches, <laughs> which is unheard of. Wow, I'm bad at this. Chuck Knoll, Bill Cowher, and, and Mike Tomlin. See, now he has tri- more trivia than you think. So, Just ask about it. And Tomlin's not going to do that. No, he's not. He's not had a losing record in 14 <laughs> years. So it's just it's pretty incredible with coaching turnover nowadays in pro sports, especially three coaches. <laughs> Broncos fan. <laughs> new, new coach every year or two. <laughs> They're taking their time this year, though, hiring a new one. Everybody has. Colt Starr, everybody's taking their time. So. Except for the Panthers. Except for the Panthers. Yeah. yeah. And, um, of course, you want to know the National Days today. Sure, let's National hear it. Chocolate Cake Day. All right. Also National Geographic Day. Okay. And National Fun at Work Day. So have fun at work reading a National Geographic while eating your chocolate cake. You got to figure it out. There we go. So, <laughs> I hadn't done that in a while. So I fun's it out. one of our core values at First Federal Savings Bank. <laughs> so it's on so today. It's Same on here. today. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of fun, we got an upcoming event around the community that's going to be fun for some fathers and daughters. The, yes. the Daddy Daughter Dance, presented by Sayo Zai. Um, that's going on. It's the, it's the Daddy Daughter Glow Dance, I should say. It's yeah. on Saturday, February 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Fulton Community Center. Tickets are $15 per guest. You can get those from a Sayo member. And in that $15, that includes professional photos from Bailey Warren Photography, raffle ticket, Craft, cakewalk, refreshments, and dancing. And this is good for ages three through sixth grade. Yes. So. Do you have to bring your own glow supplies? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. It's probably provided, but that's something I don't know off the top of my head. All right. If you want to add more pieces of flair. I would say you probably can bring more accessories. Yeah, if you want to add more pieces of flair, you could <laughs> yeah. probably glow it up with even more. <laughs> so, Paul, if you do, you better glow it up. Uh, no, we're not. Office space, that's another good comedy. There we go. We're starting to think about that. <laughs> Cranking them out here. Cranking them out. Okay, there's a couple other things here coming right up. Fulton County Chamber Women in Business Breakfast at the Outlet Youth Center, Friday, February 3rd. Those are, the, that last one was extremely well attended. Good. So we'll have a couple of First Federal ladies there. and um, Neat event for... Um, ladies in business around the community that are looking to get together, connect, um, learn some things, be inspired, network. So Fulton County Chamber is doing a great job with those. Also, RHS Job Fair, May 3rd at the high school. It's a little ways out there, but you can uh, start by calling Kristen Horn, 574-223-2176, extension 4000, if you want to reserve a table. This is for businesses that want to talk to students. And this year, they're also going to have open interview times from 12.30 to 2.30 where you can actually interview some That's great. students that you visited with earlier in the morning. If you want to learn more about that, you can contact the same phone number, 574-223-2176, extension 4002, and talk to Lori Atkinson. Um, money news this week, Tanner. Yeah, I... We I, were up. Yeah. 
Dow Jones was up this week. That's positive to talk about this. I know. Yeah. It's kind of earnings season for corporations, and um, and also there have been some numbers. There was a positive GDP number in the fourth quarter, two point, annualized at 2.9%, which is kind of like our old average uh, in that range since before the pandemic. So it's um, everyone's still fearful of a little bit of a slowdown. How's this all going to work out? But uh, the, the economy is still moving forward. Uh, one part of that, employment, labor is still really strong. There's some headlines out there about layoffs from tech companies and things like that this last month. But remember, those companies really beefed up on sure. their staffs during the pandemic yeah. times and remote yeah. working and all those things. So probably just some normal uh, right-sizing there. And then the big headline this week in money was Tesla. Uh, they had record revenue and earnings for their latest quarter. So... Um, their stock just popped big time. It's the first time they've been in the headlines for a positive reason for a little while. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Which is good for them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> when, when their CEO goes and buys Twitter and, well, mm. you know. <laughs> minding the store. Yeah, exactly. That's the question. <laughs> well, let's talk about First Federal for a second. What's our free gift for <laughs> checking account opening this cycle? We have a mobile thermometer. Ooh, how's that work? So it's it's literally a thermometer. You plug it into your phone. It goes into the thermometer on your phone like you would when you yeah. start a device. Okay. Put it up to your forehead. It gives you a reading. Get down in there. Uh, all right. So if you're feeling a little faint, you yep. just uh, yep. check yourself out. It's just a small little thermometer. It's easy cool. to take on go with you. It works really well. When we were testing it, I remembered I, I, test every te- I tested every teller. Rochester, just make sure that I want to get the same reading. <laughs> I was like, if I'm getting the same reading, we're not going with this. It's faulty, but so I can assure you it's just pretty accurate. That's right. really neat. I've never seen one of yeah. those. Yeah, That's I, I hadn't either. And, uh, yeah. Todd, you'll have to bring one next week because I know Tanner won't. <laughs> <You know, laughs> I meant to leave myself a note last week. Bring one next Friday. Uh-huh. I forgot. Well, we want to be your primary bank, so... Uh, consider bringing your checking account to us. We've got a great contactless debit card you can use really easily around. Um, we're really fun. Tanner mentioned that earlier. Uh, take great care of your finances. We take all that very seriously. We want to build relationships and serve our community. That's what we started to do back in 1966. Yeah. And we're a full-service yeah. bank, like Evan said. So Come on in and see us. This time of year is a great time. Also thinking about um, retirement planning wealth building, all the long-term things that you could be doing. You don't want to wait too long to start on this because they can really build up over time if you have enough time. So you might want to think about calling Brian Bell or Mark Blubar or Financial Services Department also. Great time of year to do that. Okay, uh, what about our social media? Yeah, we are active on most of the big social media platforms out there. So you can like our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at FFBanking. You can like us on LinkedIn, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, but you can find archived First Federal Radio shows from dating back till, I want to say, 2018. If you're so, having trouble sleeping one night, yeah, you can just kind of yeah, roll those in. 18. 2018, yeah. so you can, you can see what guests we've had on, and you can see the transformation of this beautiful studio that we're sitting That's right. in this morning. So. Yeah, I'm going to do that this yeah, weekend. It, it actually is kind of fun. Like, like, if you even just look at some of the thumbnails oh, yeah. Yeah. in the playlist, you can kind of do like a time lapse and <laughs> yep. see how much has changed. So that's neat. Yeah. yeah, I hope nobody notices how much we've changed. I know. Um, well, I've changed for the better. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> I, uh, I've lost weight since I started doing this. That's so. great. That's and, great. And it shows <laughs> on camera. <laughs> We're gonna have you as our guest to, for the te- full testimonial yep. later okay. this year. Right. Yep. There's a plug. Yep. Get your book. Well, we are the only locally owned bank in Fulton County, something we're really proud of. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. That's our marching orders. Um, tall order, and we take that very seriously. Borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines for our loan products. We're FDIC insured and an equal housing lender. Our NMLS number is 399927. And that makes us legal. All right. Let's bring in the, the ringleader. <laughs> Julie Schambarger, Times Theater Board President, is our guest this morning. Hi, Julie. Good morning, everyone. Here, let's see. Make sure. Good morning, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Julie, we're so excited to talk with you this morning and hear about something we've been seeing and noticing here since December. Well, before that, but uh, 
is the theater. The marquee's looking grand. We've got uh, a big event coming next month. Uh, did this just happen overnight, or what's going on here? Someone noticed our new sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this this has been a journey of a thousand steps. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> In many years and many people, awesome support throughout the community. It's just it's just unbelievable, really. Well, we want to hear a little bit about that journey. Then we want to make sure we talk about the big grand reopening coming next month. Um, Give us a little bit of a background on, you know, how this thing even got started. Because a project like this um, takes a lot of vision. You've had that. Other people involved have had that. Absolutely. Um, you got to see it first to get there. So tell us about the very beginning of, of what happened here with the Times Theater. Well, in two, it closed down in 2014. Um, I thankfully was not here to see that because it would have broke my heart. I think, <laughs> I think we had just seen Frozen in the theater <laughs> of just a few months before that with my kids. I think the last one I saw was uh, Ninja Turtles with one of my nephews. But um, in 2016, I think someone in this room was part of that. Um, a group of people got a wild idea to save it, um, thankfully. I, I don't know how they did that. Um, I remember <clears throat> Terry Lee kind of convening a call out for the whole community. Is, any, is anyone interested? Who's interested in trying to save this? Absolutely. And uh, Dr. Hoff stepped up, was willing to donate the building. Um, plans started. Like any good ideas, they evolved over time. They listened to the community. Volunteers would come in. Donors would come. And it's just been a big, glorious work of art as we, you know, what, five years now, six, who's counting? Yeah, yeah um, something like that. When you think about, I believe Fedco was a part of that in receiving the donation first um, for a short time. So they had a hand in that, which is really neat. Um, like you said, listening to me, I, I, I remember a survey. Yeah, oh, or, I filled that out. I did too. Shows. Yeah, I was really and excited about that. not happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> not yet. No dairy products yet. Not on the clean seats. Okay. Um, no, I remember that. Yep. And that's, you have, like in any good business or any good idea, involve your audience. See what they want. Let your customers lead you. And we want to be something for everybody. And I, you know, a strong community takes people willing to show up. Oh, absolutely. To have vision and, and decide what they think is important and what they want to have. And then it takes some guts to try to get it and make it happen. And that, that's kind of what I see with this project. We've had a few others here the last few years, a few other community projects that have been really impressive. That's, this one is especially so for me, too, just because of the number of people, community members, that spoke up, showed up, have stuck with it, very persistent. Um, you know, no plans are perfect. Oh, not at all. And they're not, they don't, they're not needed to be. You don't need not a perfect plan. You need, you need some, some guts and some preparation and persistence. Mom and I used to talk about some of my favorite things are bad ideas. Because <laughs> then, you, you know, You're you right. collaborate, you keep yeah. going, and you get great ideas. You yeah. have to be willing to have that conversation. You're right. And you keep going. Yeah. Like, it, it's just a terrific project. And speaking of past ones, like the splash pad, are you kidding me? Yeah. How quick did that happen? I know. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. I'm motivated. I agree. <laughs> that I think pickleball of courts. pickleball courts. I mean, just some of the things you're like, oh, I wish our community had blank. <laughs> and now that, you know, people I are coming together. I had someone together. say an uh, indoor pickleball court at the Times Theater. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Is that one of the ideas? <laughs> I'd no. want to be on the upside of the slant. Yeah. <laughs> Hitting it downhill, not up. <laughs> but oh, that's no, great. But I, the ambition of the past boards and volunteers, just that inspires us daily. Because the end is sometimes more fun than the beginning. And you guys made it look easy. You made other people want to join. Um, it's just kind of a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we can't wait to deliver it and open the doors. Okay, so let's talk about some of these more near-term milestones mm -hmm. that we've hit and some of this last year or two planning. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of different people doing things there mm -hmm. and donating time and talents as well as funds or things. So tell us just briefly about a couple
couple of the highlights there with um, uh, maybe some of the the features that we're going to be able to see here next month. Uh, one thing that I think is it's it just unbelievable. I've seen it every day for about six months, and that is the art of Jim Scott. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> he is 80 years old. He is in there tirelessly every day. Wow. Um, maybe not on Sundays. <laughs> um, he has painted maybe 40 feet of the interior. Oh, my goodness. And he's That's enough, crazy. It's unbelievable. And you think you get used to it, which how can you at that level of talent? And then he just starts freehanding. That he penciled in tickets yesterday in about 45 seconds. Oh my what just happened? <laughs> um, tireless volunteers, two guy retired men that were enjoying their summer on Lake Manitou last summer showed up and worked about 300 hours. Wow! If not more, I mean, just the investments from the community have been matched just by the hearts and time. Of so many people, which is just wonderful, and you can feel it as soon as you walk in those stores. That's the Round Barn Opry—they've been practicing every week. We were listening last week, trying to have a movie meeting, giggling. <laughs> They're awesome. They are I can't really believe it's talented. coming. Yep. Um, just everything. That's exciting. Okay, so the we mentioned this earlier. The most visible thing. The marquee. The marquee. Mm-hmm. So give us a little. A uh, short play-by-play on that and how that's leading into what's happening now. <laughs> Just wonderful. Uh, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, First Federal, um, challenged us for a match. I think we got it within a week. Wow. Um, wow. One of the most anticipated things. Right? Yeah. Asbestos removal and that stuff isn't as fun. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. Restructuring <laughs> anyone. Um, but unbelievable. Split Road Media captured it. I don't know how they did that. Where can we, people see that video? Is that on the Facebook page? It's um, pinned to the top, and it's on our uh, website. You've got to see that video. Oh, yeah. I mean, it captured it. Yeah. yeah. We just let up. They came in with two drones and cameras. We didn't need... We're like, talking about the lighting ceremony in yes. December. Um you know, Divine Power sent a beautiful, slow-falling oh, yeah. snow <laughs> with huge plates. <laughs> it's like all <laughs> it was, I love it. It was just incredible. Um, really teed it. up this kind oh, of, absolutely. you know, reopening. what we want to do. Like, yes. we are live music, movies, community events. The movies are going to be classics. Uh, we have a big announcement for the first movie on February 18th. Okay, well, tell us what it is. Willy Wonka. Oh, Tanner! Oh, oh, one. See. So that Tanner. ended last night. Um, all the movies will be just in that feel that we felt that night. You know, the classics. You're That's going great. to see Rambo marathons, Planet of yes. the Apes. Yes. All that fun. That's great. I remember seeing Home Alone three times in well, the Times Theater when I was yeah. that age. <laughs> I didn't have anything else to do, apparently. <laughs> in Greece. Uh, I have a friend, Rachel, listening right now. I don't even know how many times we went. But that is what we want to deliver to the community on an affordable level um, through ongoing support. We have the best partners. Um, We have the grand opening spread out over three days. It's that much excitement. We're talking with Julie Schambarger, Times Theater Board President. We've got uh, momentum building for the grand reopening next month. Let's talk about that event just a little bit okay. here. Some specifics there. You've got several things to share with yes. us. I know everybody's been looking forward to this. What are we What are we looking at here? So February 14th, Valentine's Day, is our 99th anniversary. They opened it up in 1924 on that day. So we're going to tip our hat to them. That's neat. That's really neat. And we'll have two events that day. Get on Facebook. We're putting all the details on okay. that today. Good. Uh, 3.30 ribbon cutting, 4.30 stage dedication, little open house tours, um, 6 o'clock intermission and uh, VIP fundraising celebration at 7.00. Round Barn Opry will be playing on February 18th, that Friday, and then we're going to have an all-day movie marathon on Saturday, February 18th. That's, that sounds fantastic. Five movies. All right. We're 
we're going to get a hand stamp. We'll see if anyone can make it. All the way through. Oh, oh that's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I've done two. That's my I limit. <laughs> that's quite a, quite a challenge. I, don't know. I predict we'll have somebody I think do that. Some of them oh, will. Yeah. yeah, I can see a handful of people that will just watch from start to finish. So we put a vote out. First movie will be Willy Wonka original. Um, second one, we thought, again, we'd have some fun with past theater experiences and do Best Man from Grass Creek. Oh, that's really special. I miss that. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Um, third one, Second Hand Lions, which is just this. Oh, I love that I movie. I love that movie. That's a good Have like, you seen that? Three. No, I haven't. Oh, you, you, you have to you come better see show it. up on Saturday, the 18th. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic movie. It's one of the best movies, like, ever that no one's heard about. Um, the fourth movie, we're going to um, need everyone's help on. We made a funny decision just opening up to vote. <laughs> Complete vote. Best comedy. Right. Pass criteria. PG-13. It'll be playing from 5.30 to 7.30, so kind of okay. pre-2014. All right. Okay. So we vote on Facebook? Or? Vote on Facebook. Okay. And then the main uh, feature that night will be Star Wars. Yeah. We sealed that deal a couple days ago with one of the copyright houses. Please tell me Star Wars A New Hope. No. Oh! <laughs> Phantom Menace? No. Okay. Which one is it? 1977. Okay. All right. The good. original. I there's there's a lot of people that have never seen that in the theater. I know. I'm one I of them. Yes. So I want to. I wish I could say that. I like I the oldest on ones. Movies. Was it really? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, I was a little too young when that came out. <laughs> My kids have only seen the older the oldest three, so they'll be really excited yeah, about this. Yeah. Why would you want to watch anything? <laughs> else? I've only seen the first three. Yeah, that's the ones yeah. I mean. Yep. That's great. Okay, well... So there's a lot of information on Facebook. Okay. And so go check out the Facebook page. Absolutely. We, I mean, back to the support and the everyone involved, we are paying tribute. We're singing one of the original songs they sang on, 19, on Valentine's Day in 24. So there is a lot going on. A lot of good feelings will be had from Oh, redoing yeah, this so respectfully of the original vision. That's just absolutely. awesome. Great job on that. Well, in support of that, First Federal wanted to announce that uh, we're making kind of a donation and pledge. Over the next four years, we're going to donate $50,000 from our endowment fund at the Community Foundation towards anything that you guys need at Times Theater. Um, we want to see this thing get started, continue, um, and I, I think we'll be joined by lots of other uh, community members in doing this. The momentum is huge. So it's our pleasure to do that. And that's in honor of, of yourself, Julie, your group of board members, past directors, anybody, all the people that have volunteered, um, put in their time and effort and talent to making this what it is. And we are going to be so proud to be there on the 14th for the reopening and, and supporting that. And that, you know, that's really what strong communities are made of. And, um, we were started with a lot of support from this community. Um, it's uh, been a great partnership, so it's our honor to do that. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Like, if you could capture a moment or a feeling of the theater, this is it. Yeah. Like, we can't do this without each other. And we have to hold each other up, promote the events, come volunteer at the concession stand. You know, all of it. I need ushers. Like, we're going to have fun with this, and we're going to build community with this. And I thank you very much. Absolutely. From everyone at the board. It's our pleasure, and uh, it's going to be neat to see where this this one project takes this community into the future. I think it's going to be big. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, Julie. Um, all right. So let's get to our trivia question. Julie, you're welcome to answer this, too, if you, mm -hmm. if you want. We'll let you try it first. Yeah. In the movie <laughs> Willy Wonka, <laughs> I know this isn't necessarily your favorite. How many golden tickets are hidden in the Wonka bars of chocolate? I don't know. If, uh, funny thing about Willy Wonka, who won the boat, he um, it secretly scared me a little when I was there. <laughs> uh -oh. I think it was Flying Monkey. Um, yeah. The, 
When you go through the tunnel, it gets a little uh, yeah, creepy there. It does. I don't know why, but it always has. And when they turned them purple, I did not like that. Yeah. yeah. You want? We'll give you a pass on this first movie, <laughs> and you can see the other four. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul. How many do you think? Five. Okay, that's correct. Five <laughs> golden tickets. Five kids that got to tour the factory. Yes. Okay. We've got a couple entries on Facebook already for the comedy. Oh, let's see what they are. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, that's yes. really good. Super bad. Okay. Project X. Go- Goonies. I, oh, I mean, yeah. Goonies. Anytime we ask for a boat, Goonies is. Oh, yeah. Goonies, Goonies will play many times at the Times <laughs> oh, Theater, yeah. I promise you. Oh, yeah. We just watched our house, the original Karate Kid. Recently, uh, so that might be another one, not not a comedy boat necessarily. Well, think of those marathon yeah, weekends. That's right. That. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Miyagi needs to be shown. Oh, on the sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we'll end our show this morning. It's been a really fun one with these words of wisdom from Coretta King Scott, um, American activist. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Great quote for this morning. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much, and uh, we'll see you guys again next week. With those